Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight Out of Boston here, and today I'm back for episode number 18 of my Tampa Bay, my 1998 Tampa Bay Devil Rays series here on OOTP 16. So today we're back with uh, the mid-season episode for 2003. We're off to a pretty good start this season, 58 and 23, really running through the league, uh, no problems. We're 14 and a half games up in the division, and we have the best record in baseball right now, although there are three really good teams in the AL this year, us, Cleveland, and Seattle. And it looks like the rest of the teams are really just battling for that wild card spot. But anyway, we've been playing really well. Um, our offense has been on a complete tear, and a lot of it has been led by this man, Eric Hinsky. He is having a breakout year, hitting 347. He's got his OPS up over 1,000 on pace for nine wins above replacement. 46, or he's got 23. He's on pace for 46 home runs. Um, I'm not sure what his BABIP is, but I'm sure it's really high. Either way, it's uh, really hard to complain about how he's played. He has been fantastic, and let's just see. His BABIP is 354, so that's probably not sustainable, but still, um, we'll take it while he's hot. And clearly, it's been the right move to you know get him in the lineup every day this year, even if um, it didn't mean, or it meant that we, or even if we could move Scott Rowland, I'm glad that we were able to put him in the lineup. Um, and Rowland's actually had a bit of a bounce back here this year, a bit of a resurgence. Um, he was actually playing even better at the beginning of the year, and his numbers have kind of come back down. But if he had this season, I really would be uh, very, very satisfied. I mean, this is the kind of player I was looking for when we got him. A gold glove type third baseman and a guy who's going to produce at the plate. Um, let's see what he was. What, what were the numbers he's putting up in Philly when we got him? All right, so he was playing really, really well. I really didn't expect him to play that well, but... Um, you know, still, if he can just do what he's doing this year, I think I'd be pretty satisfied uh, and really <laughs> wouldn't work out the contract too much, the contract extension that he gave him. Um, and really, it's been the offense that's led the way. Veritek um, hasn't had that great of a year, but, you know, he's been steady behind the plate. He sort of does what he does. Michael Hart's actually gotten hot lately. He had a slow start to the year, but he's been picking it up as of late. I already touched on Hinsky and Roland. Garcia Parra got hurt for a little while. He fractured his wrist and hasn't really been having, you know, like a great offensive season, I'd say, but his OPS is still over 800. Um, so I really can't complain. It's got his OBP up in the 380s, so that's really good for hitting in the two spot. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. is having a nice contract year. Um, got his OPS up over, you know, 970 now. His, his WAR is on pace for 5.1, um, and it's definitely a contract drive. He's a free agent at the end of the year. He's going to be looking to get paid, um, even if it doesn't come from us. Um, Canerco, he's been pretty solid as always, on pace for about 30 home runs. Griffey's on pace for 40. Sepulveda's had a good year. Uh, he's got his OBP almost up to 400, so he's been really good in that platoon with one Marquis. And Marquis has done what he's done. He bashes lefties. And Randy Wynn's been pretty good as well, playing center field. He's on pace for uh, another 4.8 win season, so that'd be pretty nice. But all right, um, as for the pitching, the pitching is probably the one spot on this team where we could use an upgrade. We still haven't really plugged that fifth starter in yet. We've tried Julian and Roman for 10 starts. I think we had Carl Robinson for 8 or 9 starts. He wasn't really any better. Um, he's been good in AAA, though, so maybe we should call him back up. Um, I think I'm going to send Roman back down at some point. But as for the rest of the staff, Saunders was uh, had to a really slow start to the year. He's actually picked it up as of late. As you can see, yeah, he's got back-to-back -back pretty good starts, and overall the last month has been a lot better. Um, now, I don't think I'm going to bump him from the rotation or anything, but uh, I think... Maybe if we picked up another starter and just replaced that fifth starter spot, um, it would give us another option in our playoff rotation. I mean, I would say right now, Hudson's definitely going to be there. Domingo has actually been pretty good as of late. He was off to a slow start this season, but he has picked it up. Um, I mean, you would think Hudson, Zito, and Domingo are going to be there, but really, it's hard to tell right now. And I think um, if we added another starter... It would just give us a little bit of insurance, especially in case of injury. I mean, right now we're looking at potentially Julian Roman or Carl Robinson having to make a playoff start if somebody went down like they did, like Hudson did last year. So I think it would, uh, you know, it could be important for us to get some depth um, in a rotation. But our bullpen's been really good. We called up Mike Gonzalez at the beginning of the year after Mariano Rivera went down for a little while. But um, when he came back, I think I sent down, uh, hmm, I don't I don't recall exactly who, but... Um, <clears throat> Oh, it was Scott Williamson, because he was struggling a little bit to start the year. He's been pretty good in AAA, though. Madsen, he was off to a slow start in AAA, but he's picked it up as of late, so he could be a candidate to call up at some point. I would say the bullpen we really don't need to worry about. We've gotten really good bullpen production out of all of our guys this year. Um, we might eventually send Knowlton back down and probably recall Madsen or um, Williamson. But other than that, I don't think really we have to worry about that. And I don't really think we have to worry about our lineup. I think we've got 9 or 10 good starters here. Um, if you count our DH, and we've got that nice platoon in right field going. We've got Quinlan for depth. I mean, maybe we could use a backup infielder. I think that's maybe one spot where we could be a little vulnerable um, is if we got an injury to our infield. So 
I mean, I like Brock, but when he played a little bit for Nomar earlier, you can see he made 38 starts. He wasn't that great. He was sort of serviceable, but <clears throat> I don't know. I wouldn't say it's at the top of our priority list. I think the top of our priority list is going to be to get a starter. But, uh, all right, so let's get to simulating. Um, we'll check the waiver wire. And um, actually, I think I'm going to call back up Robinson. I think I've seen enough of Roman. It's just assuming that he can make his next start. Um, oh, is he in? I don't know what we're looking at. Yeah, Christian Lane's had... Well, he was off to a good start in double-A. Now he's sort of struggling. Um, Robinson, all right, he should be able to make the next start. All right, so let's send Roman back down. We can wave and DFA him. And we will recall Carl Robinson. We could also give Josh Fogg a shot at some point. He's had a pretty good year in triple-A. Uh, so if Robinson comes back and struggles, we might... Uh, try fog out in that fifth starter spot but we'll see so we've got a series against boston i don't know uh, what place they're in in the division but ooh, this guy's on waivers outfielder right-handed bat i don't really need a righty Ooh, but he's got good speed mm, durable not a bad fielder can play left field Ooh, it can play center field too i kind of need a backup center fielder so i think i'll claim him i'm not sure if he'll get to us on waivers but yeah, right now we have the only claim on him, so maybe. We lose the first two to Boston, that's not good, but I think we're going to get this guy. Alright, at least we take the last game, now we've got three against Chicago. I was thinking Seiko's on waivers. And alright, we do get Jed Hawkins, so uh, I'm going to try and get Hawkins through waivers again and send him down to AAA. He's not going to be happy about that, I know, but um, we don't really have room for him at the moment, and... Like I said, I really only have him because he has the potential to play center field for us. All right. Um, I want to see how Robinson pitched. Let's see. Not too great. Give him one more start maybe before we think about calling Josh Fogg up. We're not playing that well lately, though. I'd say we were. We got off to a really hot start, and they've actually slowed down a little bit as of late. Not even just in the short like week or so that I've been recording, but even probably in the in the latter half of the month of June we started to struggle a little bit. So it's something to keep an eye on. Um, but I mean I'm not really worried. We have such a big lead in the division that I think it's pretty safe bet to say we're gonna make the playoffs at this point. Um, Alright, let's wrap up our series against Oakland. Cannot win it. And Robinson once again struggled, so alright, let's send him back down. And let's recall Josh Fogg, who just made a start. And let's see how Fogg does in the five spot in our rotation. We'll give him two starts, maybe. Um, Alright, we're going to send Roman to AAA, and we can send Hawkins to AAA. Alright. Uh, now we're playing Seattle. Is Seattle one of those really good teams? They're leading their division? Yeah, alright. Seattle's loaded, so... It's to be expected. Um, personal message from Ken Griffey Jr. He wants to resign. I can understand. Uh, but we got to finish out the series against Seattle. Be nice to take two of three, but we're in Seattle. It's going to be tough. Let's see it. Ah, we couldn't get it. All right. Um, let's see who made the All Star team for us, though. <coughs> All right, Tim Hudson makes it. He's been the ace of our staff, and once again, a Cy Young candidate, so pretty happy with that. Blaine Neal makes it out of our bullpen. Rob Nen as well. Nice to see. No Mariano, but probably because he got hurt. Uh, Scott Rowland made it. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I'm glad to see that. And Ken Griffey Jr. also makes it, as well as Konerko and Eric Kinski. So we had, like, what, seven All-Stars? That is a lot. That was pretty nice. All right. Uh, let's keep going then. We can reset our rotation here if we want. Once we get to, uh, or once we get past the All Star break here, we can figure out if Hudson can go. In the first game back, and who won the All Star game? AL did good. All right, and Rob Nan wants to resign as well. I'd love to resign all you guys, but you know we do have a but we do have a budget. Um, all right, Hudson can't go. But uh, Domingo probably can. So let's start out with him. Then we're going to go Fog. Then Hudson, Zito Saunders, I think. 
assuming Celtic can start game three. I don't know if he's going to be able to even make that start, but we'll see. <clears throat> I really just want to get Fog a start. Okay. Ooh, 500 career wins. Cool. Is that as a manager, I assume? Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. Back to the rotation. How did Fog do? Eesh, not well. All right. Um, is Hudson ready to go? No, it needs one more day. So we'll start to... Wow, Zito's actually really struggling lately. Let's start Saunders then. And then we'll try to get Fog one more start before we think about adding another starter to the deadline. All right, at least we're winning some games now. Oh, yeah, I think we swept Texas. Ooh, a simple is out with an oblique strain. That's bad news. Um... All right, well, we can put him on the DL. Whoop, no, 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 don't do that. And we will put Marquis in the everyday lineup. Um, and we will recall Judd Hawkins. Can be the new backup outfielder. Um, could also call it Maurice Brandon, I suppose, but we'll go with Hawkins for now. Uh, and then Quinlan, he can't really play right field, can he? Not really. So I guess we'll just go with Marquis full time and right then. See what he can do in an everyday role. Uh, Hawkins will have Quinlan be the backup DH. We can just copy and paste. Veritex getting hot, that's good. All right, uh, where are we at in our pitching staff and our rotation? We've got Domingo up next. All right, so we only gotta do two more games to get Fog at second start that I wanted. It's going to be in Boston. Oh, boy. All right. Good win there. Matt Boston. Fuck. Okay. Didn't pitch too poorly. Ooh, eight innings, two runs. All right. I think he's earned himself at least a third start. <clears throat> All right. Keep going, then. One more game at Boston. Can't get the sweep. Uh, Mike Hampton's on waivers. That makes too much. No thanks. All right, at Chicago, assume this is the White Sox. Yep, ooh, a 10-11 loss. That's not good. We usually win those games. Got a doubleheader coming up. Uh, I don't think we're going to have to adjust our staff for this. Because we got that off day coming up anyway. All right, we split that. Now let's do the first game in Toronto. And that'll get us to the 30th. Oh, yikes. Fog got hit around. All right. Well, we definitely need another starter then. I think that has become pretty clear. Oh, yeah. All right. So, I'm going to go searching around for uh, a starter. Also, I'm going to make a move right now. Let's send Danny Knowlton down to AAA. Oh, wow. We got a wave in DFA. All right. Maybe we can trade Knowlton for a starter then. If he has any value, he might be the guy we trade. So, we'll see. All right. All right, so I think I found our starter. We're going to be going after Chris Benson from the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're a rebuilding team, and Benson has got basically a year and a half of team control left. He'll be a free agent after next season. So that's uh, one reason why I really like this trade, uh, because although we're going to be giving up a lot, we are going to be getting him for more than just the rest of the series, not a rental. And we're going to be giving up a lot, though. It's going to be Ralph Brock, who's pretty much our top prospect at this point. Um... And we're going to need to find some more infield depth, uh, I think. But, yeah, Brock, I think he's going to be a pretty good player just looking at his ratings. I mean, I don't mind really not giving him up because I don't think he's going to be, like, a superstar or anything. I think he just doesn't. If he's not going to hit for home run power and he's not going to walk, I don't really know what his ceiling could be. Um, but I think he's going to be a pretty good player. I mean, if he fills out his ratings like that, those are pretty good offensive ratings, uh, especially for, a, you know, historical. I mean, you look at – it seems like all the ratings in this game are a little bit lower – than uh, they should be, so even if he just got to, to to these, even if he just got his contact to 60 and his avoid case to 65, I think he'd be a pretty good player, um, and he's young, he's got a lot of you know team control left, so you can certainly see the value in him, and then we're giving up Danny Knowlton, Judd Hawkins, and Hector Mercado, Mercado's kind of just a throw-in, in fact, we could probably even trade less than him if we wanted to, um, could we move, let's see, let's go to our AAA roster, could we move like Frank Knapp or something, how about one of our other relievers, I mean, we probably don't need Mercado, I just am going to try and be cheap about it, because it's what I do, it's who I am, um, could give up this guy maybe, nope, what about, you know what, screw it, we'll just give up Mercado, it's fine, and uh, yeah, Hawkins, so we're going to use Maurice Brandon as our backup outfielder instead of Hawkins, um, 
I like Brandon a little bit more, and I think Brandon's actually a lefty. Yeah, that makes a little bit more sense for us. So, yeah, uh, and we're getting Benson. Benson's a very good starter. Like I said, he's got a pretty good track record. He's had 13 wins the last couple of years. ERA's under four. He's got his war, you know, before the last couple of years, so his peripherals have been pretty good, and I just think he's a pretty solid starter. I think he's got a good chance of pitching well in the AL, good stamina as well. So, all right, that is going to be the move. Complete trade. And there we go. Uh, awesome. So we get Chris Benson. That is great news. So we are going to replace uh, Fog in the rotation with him. We can send him down. And we are going to recall, or not recall, but call up Ryan Madsen to add to our bullpen. And then we're also going to call up, uh, well, first we're going to activate Benson. Then we're going to call up Brandon. And we're going to call up, I think, Pablo Gonzalez. Um, wait, let's see, Gonzalez or well, Desma hasn't been that great in AAA. We also got Homer Bush off of waivers earlier this year. We have some options. I guess we have some options for our middle infield. It's not completely bad. Um, so let's go with Gonzalez for now. And then add him in. And we will add Brandon in as the backup center and right fielder. And then even though we have Brandon up, I think I'm going to keep playing Marquis every day while Sepulveda's out. Because I kind of want to see what Marquis can do against righties. But alright, um, so let's keep simulating for it. I'm going to simulate past the deadline and we'll go through August too. And then I'll simulate all the way up to September 1st in this video. And wow, Nolton's already on waivers for Pittsburgh. Nice. I could claim him back if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I feel, I'd feel stupid if I did that. Oh, I should claim Orlando Cabrera though. Depending on what his contract is. Go back. Oh no, I missed him. Damn it. Oh well. Alright. Uh and I suppose I could probably start. I should probably add Benson to the rotation. And then yeah, we're all set past that. It's okay. So keep going. So we've got five pretty good starters now. I don't know who's going to get bumped from the playoff rotation at this point. It's going to be uh, probably based on who performs down the stretch. But we'll see. Uh, so let's keep simulating forward here. I'm just going to try and breeze through the month of August and give you guys a better... Uh, or just try to get close to the end of the regular season. We'll keep going here. One more game against Toronto. I suppose we probably should look at this Jose Soto guy. Um, yeah, don't really need him. All right, we take two or three from Toronto. Now we've got Kansas City. Is this a three-game set or a four-game? Looks like it's a four-gamer. Okay. Take the first two. Lose the third. Oh, wow. We split the series. That's not good. Uh, Veritek wants an extension. Yeah, we know. Jeff Jenkins is history again. Uh, we had uh, Karnoko had a 27-game had a hit streak earlier this year. He was red hot back in April and May. All right. Now we've got a set against Baltimore. What'll it be? What'll it be? All right, we take the first two. We've already guaranteed ourselves a series win. That's good. And we get the sweep. All right, so let's take a look at the standings here for a second. I want to see how far up we are in the division. 11 games up on Toronto. Toronto's looking like they might get that wild card spot. Um, and then Cleveland and Seattle are battling it out for that two spot right now in the in the seating. So interesting stuff there. But we've got a pretty comfortable lead. It looks like Hinsky's not leading the uh, AL in batting average anymore. This guy is Larry Atkinson. Ooh, this guy is beast. Toronto's got a bunch of the... I, I think Toronto's going to be good in the coming years. They've got a bunch of guys locked up on these nice long-term contracts. Um, I think they have three really good starters. They have Oswalt, Halliday, and then this guy, Sam Smith, who I don't know if they drafted or what, but... Oh, yeah, there's Canerco's 27-game hit streak, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, I think Toronto's going to be pretty good in the coming years, so we'll keep an eye on them. And yeah, I mean, they're already pretty good. They're 70 and 52. That's a good record. So yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me in the least if they kept that wild card spot. But alright, now we've got a series against Cleveland, so this is one of the teams we're probably going to, we might play in the playoffs. So this is a good benchmark series. Um, alright, we'll send Brandon back down. And activate Sepulveda. Now that he's back... Uh, let's see, Sepulveda against lefty, or against righties, we want to play, whoops, and against lefties, we will keep Marquis in there, and against lefties, I think I want to move Marquis up in the lineup, oh wow, his numbers have come way down, yikes, maybe not, yeah, I'll keep him there then, 
So he must have just got, I don't know if that's because he's playing every day or what. Um, yeah, his ratings are better against lefties, so it would make sense if it was because he was playing every day. Let's see his splits. Uh, oh yeah, he's still bashing lefties, he just wasn't really hitting righties that well. Alright, so that's fine. Um, I think we could probably swap, we could do something like this. And then against lefties we could do, yeah, that's fine. Alright. Keep going forward then. We've got to uh, finish out the series against Cleveland. So we took the first game, take the second. It's a four game set, too. Ooh, we've taken the first three. Can we go for the sweep? Oh, we sweep Cleveland. I like it. Who had the shutout here? Domingo. Did he go all nine? No, only six and a third. Still, though, good performance out of him. So he's pitching well lately. And let's see what Cleveland's record is now. So they've fallen way back, 72. We're 12 games up on them. Seattle's got three, three. Actually, they got four games on them. Five in the loss column. And we've got 13 and a half on Toronto. So we'll keep going here. Got a series against Baltimore. They were right up there with Toronto earlier in the year, but not lately. It looks like. Ooh, wait. But did Benson throw a shutout here? Nice, complete game shutout for Chris Benson. Awesome. Gets his 13th win of the year. We lost the second game though. And we lose the rubber match as well, so we lose the series to, to, to Baltimore. Now we've got Cleveland again. Can we keep our winning streak up against Cleveland? That's the real question. Nope, we find to lose to them. But alright, we go 6-1 and one against them. That's pretty good. Ooh, now we've got Seattle. At Seattle, this will be a good one. Good series here. Three games set. Lose the first. Win the second. Rubber match. Nice. We take it in extras. I like that. And then one final series this month against Oakland. Ooh, Matsui's on waivers. What? Oh, give me this guy. Yeah, I'll take Hideki Matsui off your hands. Claim. I don't know why he's getting waived. He was the 11th pick in the draft last year. All right. Whatever, Chicago. I guess because he's 29, but whatever. Okay, and we have hit roster expansion. So we are at September 1st, 91 and 45 is our record, I think. I'm going to cut out here, so the next episode, I think it's pretty safe to say we're going to be making the playoffs. Um, we would have to, we're basically 19 and a half games up on Kansas City. They're the first team out right now, because Toronto's got that wild card spot. And Casey would have the second wild card if we were using two wild cards. <laughs> but, of course, we're not. And, ooh, Hinsky's getting back up there in some of the batting leaders. He might win MVP. I think he's got a real chance. He's come down a little bit as the year's gone on, but still. Hudson might win Cy Young again. That'd be nice. But alright, so that is going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Like I said, I think we're going to have the playoffs next time around unless we literally, I think, lose the rest of our... I think we might have to lose the rest of our games to not make the playoffs, but alright. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy, and I'm out. Peace.